Regardless of political sentiment, most people agree that Eleanor Roosevelt is the outstanding woman of our time. McCall's magazine is proud to have her as a member of its family through her regular monthly column of questions and answers, If You Ask Me. In our current issue, in celebration of Mrs. Roosevelt's 74th birthday, we're running a special nine-page story entitled, Eleanor Roosevelt, Her Life in Pictures. We thought you'd enjoy hearing Mrs. Roosevelt's own comments about some of the photographs we're running in the current McCall's. She has become a pinup girl at McCall's through this charming photograph which we're using on the title page of the story. I'm flattered and pleased that you've taken this picture, which was taken a year or two after I came back from school in England and had come out in the traditional way in New York. The fashion seems so funny today with the high neck and the gold beads around my neck and above all the hair, the pompadour, and I had hair below my waist and so it was hard to get it screwed up on top of my head. But a great pompadour makes you look quite different. I, I, all I can say about the fashions today is that at least we've progressed and are more comfortable. In the next picture with your father, you seem to have a very nice relationship with him. He meant a great deal to you, didn't he? Oh, my father meant a tremendous amount. I adored him all the days of my childhood. And did for many years. Did he have a particular nickname he used to call you? Or? Yes, he called me Little Nell, after the Little Nell in Dickens' story. And I always liked that. I'm sitting on my father's knee, a very badly dressed little girl, right after my mother's death. So I had a black dress with a white front. But I adored my father, and I'm sure I was very happy. The next picture is quite a lovely picture of your mother. What is your most vivid memory of her? Oh, my mother was very beautiful, and I was a very ugly little girl. I think she always wondered why her daughter had to be so ugly. And she would occasionally say that in the Hall family, there were really no ugly ducklings, and I was the exception. But. She was a very lovely person with a great sense of duty and responsibility. And so I think I adored my mother, but rather like a distant uh, and beautiful thing that I couldn't possibly get close to. In your mother's day, did women have a knowledge of child care and child guidance as they do today? Not, a, not in the modern way but my mother had a great deal of knowledge of what she wanted for my education. She was really responsible for the fact that I was sent abroad at 15 to school, even though she'd been dead many years. Here is one. I remember very well I'd come home from Europe, and this is on my husband's uncle, Mr. Warren Delano's place at Steen Valachy, which was a Dutch name. Um, that was up near Barrytown, New York. And they were all playing games, and I didn't know how to play any game. I was a very unathletic person. But I could watch very appreciatively. And I think my husband was showing off. Oh, this one. This one was on the beach, the Herring Cove Beach on Cavabello Island, across from where our house was. And it looked straight out across the Bay of Fundy to Spain. The water was terribly cold, and we decided to go wading. The beach was pebbly, but there was a little sand on that beach. But I can see that we were on the pebbles. And uh, I doubt very much if either of us enjoyed it, because only a second or two in that water and you will feel completely blue and frozen. This is my wedding picture. I had a lovely bouquet of lilies of the valley and I've loved them ever since. I think too this dress looks very old fashioned today. I never tried to save it. I 
naturally took off much of the lace, which was lace my grandmother had worn on her wedding dress. But um, the satin I went on using, and the train, which was a long train, I kept a piece of for many years in a trunk. It's still, I think, somewhere yellow and worn. You were married, I understand, on St. Patrick's Day. Who was it that gave you away? Oh, my uncle Theodore Roosevelt, and we were married on St. Patrick's Day because he had to come up for the parade. He was president at the time. Did Franklin Roosevelt have political ambitions at this time? Mm, I imagine he toyed with it because Uncle Ted inspired so many young men, but whether he had distinct ambitions as yet, I'm not sure. Do you know what Franklin thought about Theodore Roosevelt's politics? Oh, he had a great admiration for Uncle Ted. Uncle Ted inspired a great many of the young people of the day, particularly with his theory of the strenuous life and the service that people uh, owed their country. Oh, this brings back memories of our first trip abroad. We couldn't have a trip directly after our wedding because my husband was finishing his law school work for the year. And so we waited till the summer, and then we went abroad. And one of the places I had always loved was Venice. And here we are in a gondola. And I remember the old gondolier. He sang songs beautifully, in which my husband joined. And he was a delightful, romantic figure. And I love the gondolas. Here we are up at Campobello, my husband, and our first child, Anna. Uh, we had many troubles with Anna because I knew nothing about uh, the care of babies. And she had some difficulties, but she was a very nice child. Scotty dogs have become a Roosevelt trademark. Most of us, of course, remember Fowler. And this one, if I remember rightly, was called Duffy, which is the name my Scotch Terrier today is called. And we varied between Duffy and later Franklin called most of his Scotch Terriers Fowler, after the Murray of Fowler Hill, who was a border, I suppose you call him today, a border robber in Scotland. Suddenly, this picture shows a family that has grown enormously. Here we are in the second house that we lived in in Washington when my husband was Assistant Secretary of the Navy. And here are all five children. Anna, James standing up, Elliot on one side, and Franklin sitting on my husband's knee and Johnny sitting on mine. I really have always liked this picture. It was taken on the top floor of the house in a sort of sunroom which we used as a dormitory for the boys. And I think it's a very nice picture. Here you and Franklin are out walking in the snow after the polio attack. Was he actually able to walk on ice? This is perhaps not quite truthful because it looks as though my husband and I, on coming out of church, were walking together uh, in the snow to the car. But as a matter of fact, he would have had to have to actually walk. He could stand with me and a cane and his braces. But to walk, he would have had to have a sturdier arm than mine. So I think we must have just stood there for a minute so they could have a picture of us both. And this, of course, is election night, 1932. This is a picture that I remember not completely happily. It was reading Mr. Hoover's telegram when he conceded Franklin's election. I felt that the responsibility that lay on my husband in the heart of the Depression 
made this not exactly the happiest moment in our lives. But my husband was always an optimist, and I think for him it was a happy moment. Oh, this is one that I hardly think the gentleman would like to see. I had almost forgotten it had ever been taken. I'm sitting next to Mr. Westbrook Pegler. Quite uh, chummily, we're quite close together. And uh, we seem to be having a very cheerful time. I'm surprised that Mr. Pegler ever let himself go in that way. Ms. Roosevelt, you've been strongly criticized, and often. How do you react to criticism? I don't really mind criticism, except from people I love. And then, uh, if I think it's really uh, truthful criticism, I think about it very carefully. Here comes a picture which must have made me very angry when it was originally taken, because the one thing I've always been opposed to is photographs of people kissing each other. Whether it was my husband or my children or my friends, I just didn't like it. And here I was evidently being met by my husband, probably when I came back from England during the war. The Queen had asked me to see the work of the women over there. And while we were there, I went over on a commercial plane while we were there, our troops landed, among them my son Elliot and his uh, flyers, and they landed in North Africa, and suddenly Mr. Churchill and Mr. Wynand, our ambassador, said, wish you can't go back on a commercial plane that stops in Lisbon, the Germans will find out, and she'll endanger everybody else on the plane. So at last I was sent back in one of our returning bombers with a crew that had delivered a bomber. The heat went off, and we were cold all the way over. It was a most difficult and unpleasant trip. However, I enjoyed it. And I think this is probably taken, certainly without my knowledge, as I got into the car uh, on the return from that trip. But evidently, my husband was glad to see me when I got back. As First Lady of the Land and a newspaper woman, you must have known many things that you couldn't talk or write about. This cartoon appeared when the president was deciding whether or not he would run for a third term. There were many cartoons. They depicted many things. I'm afraid I did some things which were not usual for the lady in the White House. And this shows me sitting up in bed with a typewriter, and I'm supposed to be writing my day. The caption reads, but it would make such a nice scoop if you'd only tell me, Franklin. Now, of course, there were many others, but I loved this one. It was very amusing because Franklin never told me anything. And now we come to the very last picture, which is with one of my, well, my first great-grandson, and I think the picture looks as though both of us were having a very good time. You know, I now have 10 great-grandchildren. The last one has just been born, a little boy, to Elliot's oldest daughter, Chandler Rosebud. And 10 great-grandchildren is quite a number, even though I have 19 grandchildren. Mrs. Roosevelt, if you had your 10 great-grandchildren sitting around in front of you, what advice would you give them to guide them in growing up? And I think I would say that they have a greater opportunity because they're born in a less rigid mold. They have more opportunity to shape their lives. They will, of course, I believe, have many disappointments, because in life, you always have disappointments. But if you have the character which makes you go on striving, I think the young people of today 
have greater opportunity than ever before. Thank you very much, Mrs. Eleanor Roosevelt, for sharing these moments of nostalgia with us. And we're looking forward to seeing the remainder of Eleanor Roosevelt's life in pictures in the current issue of McCall's magazine.